chain transfer processes are important in free radical polymerization because they provide another pathway to produce dead polymer chains. Remember that we talked about termination as a process that converts active or growing polymers to dead polymers or polymers that no longer have active sites that allow them to add additional monomer units and grow. There's other processes that can also lead to the production of dead polymer. And you can imagine that these kinds of mechanisms will increase the rate of termination and thereby intuitively reduce the degree of polymerization because they'll uh, favor the production of dead chains uh, at shorter, uh, shorter lengths than would have been achieved previously. Now we can think about the mechanism of this process by adding an additional step. So here uh, you have a growing chain of length i, and it reacts with a chain transfer agent that I'm denoting with uh, A, uh, and that produces a dead polymer of length i, and the radical, free radical that was associated with the active chain is now transferred uh, to the, to the uh, chain transfer agent. Then this chain transfer agent becomes available again to transfer its radical back to a monomer and start the process all over again uh, of, uh, by initiating another growing or active polymer chain. Now these chain transfer agents can be different things. It could be transferred to another monomer, could be transferred to the solvent, transferred to the initiator, or some other chemical that's added specifically to scavenge or compete for the free radical uh, that is associated with the active chain. To see how these processes affect the chain length, then we're going to need to look at how these processes affect this ratio of the rate of polymerization to the rate of production of dead polymer. We can write an expression for this ratio uh, in terms of the reaction rates that we've already determined from our kinetic analysis. In the denominator, I have the termination rate associated with disproportionation plus the rate of termination associated with chain transfer. Now I'm neglecting combination because if chain transfer is important, intuitively this free radical is being removed from the growing chain in a mechanism that is different from the combining uh, of two growing chains together. Uh, so uh, that's inherently uh, out of the picture right now, so we're going to ignore it. So when I substitute in these rate laws associated with these three processes, uh, I obtain uh, this expression. Then I can analyze it first by taking the inverse of this. So that will allow me to get a common denominator. So I'm just going to take one over the degree of polymerization. So I have the inverse of this equation. And I'm going to cancel out then the common factor of the concentration of active chains in the system. When I do that, I can then break this into two terms. The first term, which is the disproportionation rate constant relative to the rate constant associated with propagation times the concentration of active chains over the concentration of monomers times two. And then I get a second term. That's the ratio of the rate constant associated with chain transfer times the concentration of the chain transfer agent divided by the propagation rate constant times the monomer concentration. Now remember that this A can be several different possible uh, processes. So I can expand then this by defining a separate term for each of these species. So I have a transfer to monomer. I have a term associated with transfer to solvent. I have a term associated with transfer of the initiator and a term associated with transfer to the agent. And remember, this involves transfer of the free radical away from the active chain to somewhere else so that the active chain then becomes a dead chain. Okay, we know this, an expression for this concentration of active chains in the system. We derive that during our kinetic analysis by employing the steady state approximation, so that can be substituted. And then notice that each of these other terms includes a ratio of rate constants. In fact, it's the ratio of a rate constant associated with the transfer process to the rate of propagation. So I can express 
these rate constant ratios in terms of these what uh, these uh, parameters that I'm going to call chain transfer coefficients CM CS CI and CA so now if I put it all together I have a first term that's associated with the disproportionation process or the conventional termination process that we've already talked about plus four additional terms that represent these additional chain transfer processes monomer solvent initiator and chain transfer agent and so I can see based on these rate constants and based on the relative concentrations of the species associated with those processes how these additional steps will affect the degree of polymerization in my sample now we've only considered the effect on the chain length the rate of polymerization actually isn't going to be impacted that much by chain transfer uh, because again as long as initiation is happening rapidly uh, we still have uh, new active chains being produced at approximately the same rate that they're being consumed by either termination or chain transfer and that was the key to our steady state assumption okay so often we want to talk about this term the chain transfer agent and the reason is that this is something that we can control so we can add on purpose a chain transfer agent that will allow us to manipulate further the degree of polymerization in our sample and so this is an important uh, capability that's available uh, through this process so if we just consider only this term uh, in the degree of polymerization equation notice that we end up with a linear equation for this term one over the degree of polymerization as a function of this ratio of the chain transfer agent concentration to the monomer concentration so in other words if I plot one over n bar n as a function of uh, a over m I should get a linear relationship the y-intercept is this collection of terms the first term one over n bar n naught which remember that represents the degree of polymerization where we have only uh, only termination by disproportionation plus this additional term so and notice the slope of this line is equal to this uh, this coefficient this chain transfer coefficient so high chain transfer coefficients uh, correspond to a high slope and reduce the degree of polymerization increases one over the degree of polymerization and reduces the overall degree of polymerization so there's many chain transfer agents that can be added uh, you know even isopropanol is a common one that we've used in the past uh, to control uh, molecular weights in polyacrylamide polymerizations that we've looked at in our work um, but this is an additional tool that's available uh, to control the properties uh, of the polymer that's produced and we can understand how to manipulate that based on this kinetic model.